Hello students and welcome to another Algebra 1 lesson from uh, Mr. Graves. We are going to talk today about multiplying radicals and uh, we've uh, done a couple of other videos on some basics of how to break down uh, square roots into simplified form. If you've not seen those, those videos you want to see first before doing this one as uh, each and every lesson of course builds on each other. But we're going to learn to multiply here today and how that works. Um, the product property of radicals is actually uh, kind of our main property and uh, it's shown right here. Here's our root of n. You can make it anything that you want, but the property in and of itself would simply be that the square root of x times the square root of y is the square root of xy. Alright? And that's uh, basically shown here in our first example. B very basic, very simple. simple. It means that the square root of 2 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 12. So 2 times 6 uh, be no different than uh, the square root of 3 times the square root of 10 would be the square root of 3 times 10 and the square root of 30, all right? Uh, that is uh, what you're able to do here. There's a couple of different angles in doing a problem like this, and I wanted to show you. First of all, the first part is just really making it the square root of 12 uh, by multiplying. And we understand that uh, we can break 12 down into the product of the primes. We know that we get 2 times 2 times 3. And that basically is uh, uh, the factors of 12. And then we pull out the set, remember, of 2. And that goes on the outside, leaving 3. So 2 square root 3 is our answer. Now, the other way to do it would be simply to put all of the factors under one radical. All right? And we're able to do that by putting the 2 here. And then we know that 6 is 2 times 3. We can do it in a problem like this because 6 is a pretty easy number. And uh, so we'll just put this is the 2. And then the 6 would be 2 and 3. Then we know that we've got our set again. We pull it out and we get the answer 2 square root 3. All right? Now that's the basis kind of for what we're building upon in the lesson here today. We also have this next problem. And I want you to see, uh, some of you that may be doing this for the very first time, will come to realize that not only do we have numbers that are under the radical side, but now we have numbers that are on the outside. And we have to remember that the numbers on the outside can be multiplied together, but they need to be numbers only on the outside multiplied. The numbers on the inside under the radical, they can also be multiplied together, but they need to be only under the radical, all right? You can never multiply a negative 2 here times a 50. Nor could you multiply a 5 times an 18. You need to keep them separate. All right? So what we've done is we've taken 18 and 50. We've broken them down. We also realize that we can break them down and get the answers for each and then simplify. Uh, there are uh, several ways to be able to do a problem. A lot of times uh, more than one way to kind of skin a cat when you're doing math and all of that. But what we're going to do in this particular case is put everything under one radical. Negative 2 times 5 is a negative 10, and it is part of our problem, so don't just forget about it. It's a very important part of it, but you need to leave it there. We know that 18 is 2, 3, and 3, so we're going to write that uh, 2, 3, and 3. You're going to write it actually as 3, 3, and 2. And then our square root of 50 is 2, 5, and 5. And the reason I did that is 3, 3, 2, and not 2, 3, 3, is so that I could have the 2's right next to each other, all right? And we realize that, again, we've got sets that we can pull out. Now, there is another way, and just so you understand, you'll see this kind of in textbooks, curriculum, and uh, as you uh, go through radicals, as you get better at them, as you get experience, your book might have a tendency to write it like this, 3 squared, 2 squared, and 5 squared, all right? And it doesn't list every single one, but it does it in squares. Now, if you're doing a cube root like a problem like this, then you would do them in uh, sets of three. If you don't have three, then you would just have to leave it. This happens to be a problem that has everything accounted for under the radicals. So we're not going to have anything left over because we've got all the sets. But if we had an extra 7 here, that 7 would stay. It wouldn't have a power because it doesn't have another number that's the same to it that could be pulled out. So you can do either one. As you get better at radicals, you might find yourself actually doing it this way, a little bit less writing or maybe a little bit quicker. But we see that the 3 comes out, the 2 comes out, and the 5 comes out. So we have a negative 10 times 3 times 2 times 5. Everything's accounted for, nothing left under the radical. So 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30, and a negative 10 times 30 is a negative 300, and that becomes our answer, all right? 
On to the next problem, we have a 6AB, square root of 6AB times the square root of 2BC. And all we're going to do here is we're going to put, our, again, everything under the same radical. This isn't a big problem to do. So we've got a 2 times a 3, which I'm just going to put 3 and a 2. And then I have a 2 as well, put that there so that they can be next to each other. I have 1A, I have 2Bs, and I have 1C, all right? Again, if I want to rewrite, I can write it like this. 3 times 2 squared times uh, A times B squared times C. Either one works. You can start writing them in pairs if you would like to uh, because this is a square root. We know that the 2 is going to come out. We know that the B is going to come out. What do we have left over? We have a 3, an A, and a C. 3AC. And that becomes our answer. All right? Uh, again, from the last video, everything's in sets according to the index or the root. And uh, whatever doesn't make a pair or maybe three, depending on what it is, has to stay, all right? So that helps us to kind of understand where we're at. All right, 225 and 315, the cube root of each one. We're gonna find out what that is uh, by way of an answer. And what we'll do here is we're gonna put everything under the, the cube root or the radical, and uh, we're looking for sets of three. So in order to do that, we have one, two, three, four. We have four threes, all right? Well, how would that be written? Well, it would be, there's three of them times another three. So there's our four, all right? We'll do this problem uh, in uh, the fashion or method of this. We could write three, 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 three um, if we wanted to, but we'll just do it this way, all right? Three squared times three, all right? How about our fives? It looks like we have three, don't we? What a deal, all right? So let's write down five to the third. And what's left over, which is uh, definitely going to be on its own, a seven, all right? So we'll take this three out, we'll take this five out, and that will make three times five on the outside. What will that be? That will be 15, all right? What do we have on the inside? Well, we have a seven and a three, but we don't write it like that. We multiply it. 15 times the square root of 21 is our answer. Doesn't look very simplified or neat, but that's exactly what it is, okay? Now, let's take uh, the square root of 50 times the square root of 32. I have already uh, pulled them out, and uh, I, I guess if we could, we put it all under one radical, but I wanted you to notice that we see a 25 and a 16 here. Those are perfect squares. This would be a five, this would be a four, all right? Now, if we were to break it down, we would see the five, the five, and the two, all right, right here. For the 16, we would see the two, the two, the two, all right, and the two, and the two, because 16 is four twos and then a two, all right? So we notice that we have everything being accounted for, don't we? Nothing is left over, all right? And it looks like we've got a five to pull out, a two, a two, and a two, all right? So eight times five is 40, and that becomes our answer, okay? Now, just uh, a couple of things here. One uh, last problem here at the bottom, and I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing just so we can kind of see this problem a little more clearly. And that is uh, a problem that looks like almost a distributive property kind of problem, all right? And what that does for us is I can tell you that a times, a times b plus c is equal to, what do we say? a times b automatic plus a times c, okay? Well, guess what? It turns out that we can do the same thing with radicals and the numbers that are even outside of them, okay? This has several different steps, but if you'll follow each step and remember what our rules are, you'll kind of understand. So, just like, the, we'll take the a times the b, so let's do this. Two times square root six times the square root of 15. Now remember, we can't crisscross. The six and the 15, we can multiply, but we can't do the two, can we? So let's do two square root six times square root 15 automatic plus, as I've taught my students, all right? So a, b, automatic plus, and then what do we do? We go back to the a, and we multiply times the next term, all right? So we'll go back to two square root six, all right, times, all right, what do we have? Negative three, negative, now remember that, negative three square
square root 10. Okay? Now we've got two separate problems here. This is a separate problem right here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's bring it over here, okay? The 2 is on its own. Square root, all right? Uh, 15 times 6, all right? What's that, 90, I believe? So let's put 90, all right? Um, then, then we have a plus here, but we're multiplying these two together. We have a negative plus, so we know that's going to be negative, okay? So 2, positive 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6, square root 6 times 10. What's that? That's 60, okay? We've got some big numbers under our square roots, so we don't want that. We need to break them down. So 90, all right, is 2, 45, and 3, that's 15, and then 3, and then 5, okay? So 2, 3, 3, 5, and then 60, let's break that down a little bit. We get 2, which is 30, 2, 15, 3, and 5, all right? Now watch what we do here, all right? If 90 is broken down into... 2, 3, 3, 5. Let's write that down. Minus 6. And let's say we break that 60 down as 2, 2, 3, 5. Let's do that. 2, 2, 3, 5. All right? We're pulling out sets of 2, aren't we? That's all we can do. So if we pull out the 3, 2, 3 has become 1. What's 3 times 2? 6. So that becomes 6. Square root 10 minus... All right, could pull out twos. That comes out as one, two, six times two is 12. And what are we left with? Square root 15. All right, and that becomes our answer. Now, that one uh, takes a lot of different steps, and that's what we end up having. So we gotta remember that we follow every single step in breaking things down, obviously using our, our, our property, and uh, following that as well, keeping the numbers that are on the outside, the numbers, keeping the numbers on the inside, the numbers as well, all right? Hopefully that'll be a help to you, and uh, I trust you have a great day. Thank you. Take care.